I got the carrier off, uh, but I did have to borrow a spanner I've lost. So what we're actually aiming to do today is replace this slider. It lives on the caliper right here at the top and that's what this caliper slides back and forth on. And the problem is the boots have got torn over the ages and um, aren't protecting the slider. So I've got new boots to go into the caliper as well. So that should keep this new slider from corroding. Um, I'm now at the stage where I'm going to remove the caliper, tie it up out of the way and get the new slider in. But I also need to remove the carrier and this is the carrier here. So if I lift, that's the caliper, the bit that moves. This is what carries the pads and that needs to come off to enable me to replace discs which have got a really nasty bit of wear on them very sharp edge there. So new discs and pads, all should be good. I've removed the pads now and um, you can see how uneven the wear is. This one has worn much more heavily and that's a classic sign of something sticking in the caliper. So I've now got my Allen key on and I'm now going to undo this slider which will then free off the whole caliper. With the slider removed, I've now used twine to tie the caliper up, up out of the way so there's no weight hanging on the flexible brake hose because that's not very good for them. I've now got the slider out, here it is on my Allen key, and um, you can see at the top there, nasty bit of corrosion. That's because the boots failed, moisture's got in, and it stopped that from being very slidey. I've got the carrier off easy enough, that's held by two 18mm headed bolts, um, a particularly annoying size, and I was forced to borrow a spanner from my neighbour. Thank you very much neighbour. So now I'm at this stage, and what we have is two tiny little um, Torx bolts, which are now holding the disc in place. So you can, you can see that's nice and loose now, because I've removed this one completely and this one's on its way out. Almost time for new discs. This is the new disc in place, and you may be thinking, these tiny little screws, is that really all that holds the brake disc on? But of course it doesn't, because the wheel bolts go through the disc to bolt to the hub. So effectively, the wheel is helping hold the brakes on. So don't worry. So, we've got the carrier back in place. I'm now working on the caliper. I've removed the remnants of the old seal. You can see there's effectively a metal clip around it, so you need to try and drive a screwdriver in behind it, and then it'll just flick out. That seems easy enough. And you can see there's the metal ring on the new one. The kit includes some Loctite, which I'm assuming is to try and help keep the seal in place. But I will look that up just in case it's to lock these bushes in place. Uh, talking of the bushes, I've just drifted this one out. You can probably but see, that's where it lived, and I've just pushed it out just by smacking it with a screwdriver from the other side. I've got brand new bushes to go in, so that's what the slider actually runs along. So it's important that you keep these nice and clean, and then the kit includes a little sachet of grease, so I can lube everything up when I'm done. So I've just got one more bush to get out, I've got to drive this bush out, and then I can carry on with fitting it all back together. Well, for a brief stop for rain, I've got the new slider in with its boot and I'm now in the process of winding back the main piston so I can get the new pads in which of course will have a lot more meat on them. It's just a case of turning that um, the right way to wind it back in. So not a difficult operation and easier while I've got the caliper off like this. Getting closer. Well, it's now day two of what has turned out to be a fairly long-winded uh, maneuver. I'm now on the passenger side. I've been having a problem with getting the caliper to fit around the new discs. Uh, so I'm having to wind it back and I've found quite a creative way of doing that. I found that a three quarter inch socket will actually fit on the piston so I can actually apply the pressure you need to and wind it back using a ratchet without having to buy a wind back kit. 
Um, it looks like I just need to do that a bit more. So my day hasn't entirely gone to plan. I have got the brakes finished, and that's obviously a good thing. But unfortunately the offside front caliper appears to have a problem with a parking brake. So it's just not working. So after all that work, it looks like I'm still going to have to replace the caliper, which I arguably should have just done in the first place, instead of faffing about with sliders having a complete nightmare. So, on to another job. And making the clock work was a priority, which now sees the dashboard looking like this. Uh, this is the clock unit itself. Um, I've replaced a bulb in there, which cost me £2.49 from the rip-off merchants at Halfords. And um, I'm hoping it's going to work. I'm yet to be convinced, but I could really do with getting this car back together again. So, here goes. And there we go. Tinkering is complete. The dashboard is back in place. And... The clock is working. Well, that's very pleasing, but what a job. <sighs> Still need to replace a brake caliper, but at least I've had a couple of days of tinkering and it hasn't rained too much. Job's a good one. See you next time.